I'm going to show you one of the most complex borders in the whole world. This. This is how the main border of India and Bangladesh look like for almost 70 years up to 2015. What are these weird little dots? Well, they are actually little pieces of India inside Bangladesh and little pieces of Bangladesh inside India. Up until 2015, there were a total of 198 such complex pieces of land just along this one border. These small pieces of land are called enclaves. In its simplest sense, an enclave is a piece of a country that is completely surrounded by another country. Let's use an example to understand this. We have country X over here. And then there is another part of that country X in country Y. This here is an enclave. Around 2000, there were 256 enclaves around the world, of which 198 were shared by Bangladesh and India. Enclaves are actually pretty common and easy to understand. However, in the case of India and Bangladesh, things were not so simple. India had 106 enclaves in Bangladesh and Bangladesh had 92 enclaves in India. This is pretty crazy as it is, but it's also just the tip of the iceberg of this entire madness. Inside of an enclave can further exist what's called a second order enclave. Imagine that country X has an enclave inside of country Y and country Y has an enclave inside of this enclave then this would be the second order enclave. Understanding one of these is fairly easy. But India and Bangladesh didn't just have one second order enclave, they had dozens. Inside of the total 106 Indian enclaves in Bangladesh were 20 Bangladeshi second order enclaves. And inside of the total 92 Bangladeshi enclaves in India were three Indian second order enclaves. And then to make matters even more complicated, there was this, what you are currently looking at, is the only third order enclave to ever exist in the world. It's a small part of India, inside Bangladesh, inside India, inside Bangladesh. So if you started from here and walked in a straight line, you would begin in India, then reach Bangladesh, then India, then Bangladesh, then India, then Bangladesh, then India, and finally, Bangladesh. And this whole line was just approximately 100 meters long. But how did we land in this complex situation? There are actually many popular legends and myths about the history of the author that there has been outlandish game of chase where the rulers just bait on their land and those became enclaves. And there are also legend of ink spill on the map and those inks became enclaves. But historically, these enclaves actually came into being in 1713. This was the time when the Kuch Bihar king and the Mughal rulers signed a treaty. This was like a peace treaty in which both the rulers decided to keep the pieces of land that they owned in the other rulers region for the simple purpose of collecting taxes. But even during this, these lands were not formally drawn on any map and this continued till 1947. It was the Britishers who complicated things. When the partition happened, the Britishers drew the lines that formally made these enclaves a part of the other nation. As a result, in 1947, the enclaves ended up being, let's say, on the other side of the border. So they became the international enclave for the first time in 1947. Now, these enclaves weren't just empty pieces of land. These were homes to many people. More than 55,000 people lived in these enclaves and living here was not very easy. They couldn't enjoy many basic services, couldn't access schools, couldn't own or sell land, didn't receive medical care and were not even helped by the police when required. They completely got cut off from their home countries and started to leave on the mercy of the host country. In fact, the situation was so bad that to go to their home country, they needed a visa. The irony was that they could get the visa only by going to the embassy that was in their home country, for which they did not have the visa in the first place. And that's absolutely crazy. After partition, many efforts were made to solve the issue of these enclaves, but none were successful. Then came the 2015 Land Boundary Agreement. As the clock struck midnight on 1st August 2015, India and Bangladesh finally exchanged all except one of their former enclaves. There were celebrations all around. Residents of the enclave gathered in their main marketplaces. Many were chanting slogans to express their joy. Their happiness was shown in the many fireworks that lit up the sky that night. So what did this agreement exactly say? Bangladeshi enclaves in India formally became part of the Indian nation and the Indian enclaves in Bangladesh formally became part of Bangladesh. 
And what happened to the residents of these lands? Well, they were given the right to choose which country they wanted to be citizens of. So they could decide to stay where they were and opt for a formal change in their citizenship status. Or they could decide to move to their home country and become the citizen of that home country. At that time, many had thought that there would be a massive exchange of people after this agreement. But surprisingly, that was not the case. Out of the total 52,000 people that lived in these enclaves, less than 1,000 people chose to go back to their home state. 51,000 chose to stay in their land and became citizens of the host nation. By the time these were exchanged in 2015, these people were second or third generation enclave residents. So they were born there, they were raised there, and, and, and the identity that they developed was of the host country, not the home country, because many of them have never been to their home country. They wanted to be recognized as regular citizens of the host country. And when the opportunity came, that was their first choice. The example of India-Bangladesh enclaves is one of the most complex and interesting examples of borders all around the world. It shows that borders are not just lines on a map, they have deep impact on economies, politics, nations, and especially people. Did you know about the India-Bangladesh enclaves? We at Nutshell love to create interesting videos about lesser known Indian history. So if that's something you are into, let us know in the comments what other topics we should cover. And yes, don't forget to show us your love by liking and sharing this video.